Okay, I'm uh, I'm Solomon. Welcome to Life After Work. This is another uh, start to a video I've been working on for a couple of weeks. When I say working on it, every time I produce it, it works just fine. When I upload it to YouTube, even though it's an MP4, uh, it won't upload. I don't know why. I'm still having to work on that YouTube side of it, but that's okay. I'll just uh, put a little more on here. I realized as I was processing this uh, video that I didn't answer the questions I asked. Uh, what kind of wood did they use on battleships? Teak. They used teak on battleships. They also used teak on uh, ocean-going minesweepers, at least the old ones. And... There's a lot of people who I've seen on the internet that uh, are a little confused about how that teak, it's not a teak deck, it's a teak cover on a steel deck. Uh, question, why did they do it? Well, I think the consensus in the Navy is that the Navy is a highly, highly traditional uh, outfit. And I believe they're that way in everybody's Navy. Sailors go to sea on ships. There's just uh, a different culture there. So traditionally, they had wood ships. When they went to steel, I think uh, one of the first thoughts was to put wood on the deck. Uh, I'll get to the part about why they chose teak in just a second, but there are people who have said that more American ships were sunk in World War II because they had wood decks. And that wood decks had nothing to do with any of that. Uh, because like I said, underneath it was steel just like any other ship. Um, there are people I've, I've talked to that said that uh, the steel decks were slippery when wet. And the teak decks helped them gain some traction. The other side of that, other people say that uh, they did away with wood decks because the wood decks were slick and they were able to put non-skid on the steel decks. That, you know, all of that's, that's not accurate. Uh, the fact is, wet decks at sea are wet with salt water. When the water runs off, a layer of salt is left on the deck and that's like ball bearings. So it doesn't really matter what kind of deck you have. Uh, if you don't have a non-skid and you don't do regular what we call freshwater washdowns to get the salt off, you bust your butt at least once every time you went to sea. It's, it's, you know, but that, why did they choose teak? Teak has a natural ability, if you get a splinter from it, instead of getting an infection, Sorry, time for me to go out. Uh, if, you, if, if you get a, a splinter, you might get an infection. Not with teak. Teak is, I think they call it anaerobic, but at any rate, it's, it, if, if you get shrapnel from teak, you're going to be better off than getting shrapnel from anything else. Uh, and it's no fun getting shrapnel, I'm sure. So teak, teak is just a good all-around all, way, all around wood. Now, the finish on it, they don't finish it. Uh, I've, I've read opinions on people where they said, oh, they must put a polyurethane on it to make it look good. No, they holy stone it, rub it down with, with uh, stone to smooth it, you know, keep it in good shape. But they don't, uh, they don't put a finish on it. Now, if there's interior teak like we had on our bridge, where we had a lattice work uh, all around the, the, uh, the bridge, that'll have a finish on it. But that's inside. That's a place where you polish the brass and you, you shine up everything. Externally, though, no, they never put a finish on it. So the teak decks are gone. Uh, ships no longer have any wood decks at all of any kind. So anyway, that's it. It's teak. It's because of tradition. And teak was a wood that 
just suited combat. So there you go. That answers the question. So I'm going to keep, I'm just going to put this on what I've already started and hopefully I'll be able to get it processed and uploaded today. Everybody have a good day. Bye. Okay, welcome back to uh, Life After Work. My name's Solomon. I'm making this little tag piece to put in the front of my third and final uh, video that I made some couple of weeks back. I had so many interruptions trying to get these uploaded. I finally get it up. I finally just split it into three pieces, and this last one just starts out kind of stark and straight to business. So I decided just to add this tag on the front and tell you this will be the last one in this series, and then I'm going to get busy with uh, some trains. I'm thinking I'm going to bring a few trains out. Uh, and start taking a look at them and seeing what I need to do to do some maintenance on them. But anyway, I'll, I'll go ahead and get this last video out. It's fairly short. I will uh, tell you a few facts about these uploads. Uh, I'm using, what is it, uh, Power Director 13. Anyway, it uh, in these videos, for a 15-minute video, it has taken me 20 minutes for Power Director to actually produce it. It's taken me about the same amount of time, 20, 25 minutes, to upload it to YouTube and then to uh, that final step that YouTube does in producing it uh, took about another nine minutes. So I'm, I'm moving as fast as I should with this system I've got now. Because like I think I said before, I've, I'm on a cable system that has uh, one of the highest speeds in the United States uh, at 60 megabytes per second. So it, it moves pretty quickly. I have had a little bit different uh, results at different times of the day. So I think like any system, uh, there is a difference uh, based on when everybody gets online, I think. But it's, it's a minor difference for me, so because I'm lucky I've got a really fast system uh, to deal with. And if your IP uh, provider, your internet provider, uh, doesn't have very high speed, then, I mean, that's your choke point, the weakest link in any chain. Uh, around here, I know where my brother lives, uh, about 40 miles away. They don't have this, this uh, capability. They're working through telephone companies, and he's got like, where I'm 60 Mbps, I think he's less than 10, something like 6, maybe 3. It sounds crazy, but that's the way it is. So anyway, I'm, I'm pretty well pleased with the way these are uploading now, and I'll go ahead and get this last one out. So I don't know that I'll be wanting to be out spending a lot of time out here. Plus, the family's coming. A daughter and grandkids will be here through the holidays so you know we'll we'll, we'll see I'll, I'll do a few things probably concentrate on getting the electrics getting the lights need that once I get that I am pretty much good to go on anything now we're getting a little long here and I'm getting a little windy but I'm gonna bring up one more thing that I plan on working on if you'll just let me dodge the camera one more time. I'm not far away, by the way. I'm just, just coming over here to reach up on a shelf. All right, on my way back. Now, I like what, what I've seen from some of the guys in the double O scale world doing cardstock buildings. Well, several years ago when I retired, I pulled a couple of pictures out and I made like this little HO barn made out of a very lightweight card stock that uh, Rock City came off the internet. Hey, they used to put them on the tops of all the barns. Down here at Chattanooga, an hour and a half away, we've got Rock City, Lookout Mountain, 
crystal spring. We got all kinds of caves. Uh, so it's a. I just wanted to authenticate this by putting Sea Rock City on the barn. So this is O scale or H O scale. Then this is an O scale building that I put together. You know, just uh, very simple, nothing fancy. I've been looking at what other people are doing with card stock and with foam core. Now I worked with foam core years and years ago doing doing architectural models. So I found some interesting tools that come from Australia that I will probably be employing. Plus I've got a lot of foam core people were throwing away. Uh, when you get in the big engineering firms, they would put on presentations to clients and we've got a department that puts up these beautiful uh, signage and what have you and, and uh, it's on a good quality phone core. And afterwards, they throw it away. So I put a few pieces of that away. I'll be practicing with that. So that's something else for buildings and what have you. And, and hopefully I will eventually do a, just scratch build some buildings that I would want to use on a layout if I had one. Now here's the trick. I work and F scale, that's 1 to 20.32. 1 inch equals 20.32 inches. If I did this constitution in that scale, instead of being 30 inches or whatever it's going to be, it, hell, it, I don't know, I'd have to measure it and see, but I suspect it would be six foot, maybe, five and a half feet. It'd be big. Uh, so at any rate, that's, for me to do anything, any building, any house, any backdrop, it's it would all have to be huge. So that's something I'll get into. And I'm doing all that just to keep my brain fresh in retirement rather than stagnated on daytime TV, which trust me in America, you do not want to be on daytime TV. It's just, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's healthy to sit there and watch garbage. But that's my opinion. I'm sure there are a few good things on. So I think I'm going to wrap it up here. I had uh, made some previous videos on, on the models and I just decided to start all over. Why not? It's my life after work. I can spend it however I want to. So thank you for uh, all the comments on my other videos. Uh, I'm glad they stirred up a little interest for, for people. They will get better especially when I start pulling out my G-Scale Locos and get into some discussion about scale uh, because that was one of the first things I had to learn about when, when 11, 12 years ago when I decided to get back into all these hobbies, I had to learn about railroad scales because I grew up with HO and Lionel. That was it. Line L wasn't a scale, it was Line L trains, three rail train, and HO trains. When I went back and started looking into it, I found out, my goodness, we've got, we've got them down so small now that forget my eyes and fingers being able to deal with them. So thank you for coming back. I'll try to get this uploaded here shortly and we'll move on with some work here in the garage till we get it right. So keep up the railroading, keep up the modeling. You guys just enjoy your life after work. And I'm and remember, I'm not talking about people who are retired only. I'm talking about those people who work hard all week and become couch potatoes. Find you a hobby. Don't be like me and retire and then suddenly have to go look for something to do and start resurrecting stuff you did 50 years ago. Uh, and believe me, most of my tools, including my airbrush, are 50 years old so have fun have a good day and again thank you so much uh, for dropping in if you find this interesting you want to see what comes next uh, subscribe you'll get a notification and if it's not something you want to watch turn it off doesn't matter uh, 
because I plan on doing things that won't interest everyone, but will interest someone. So thank you, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.